Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Benny Atruda, and welcome back to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Well, last time, I discovered that I can choke people with my brain, which is really useful, because, you know, they don't like it, it hurts them, it knackers their dexterity, and then I can start doing ludicrous sneak attack burst damage, and it's basically the best thing in the world ever. And today, I'm supposed to be clearing out some form of corrupted grove to remove the taint of the dark side. But, um, I'm gonna be honest. I might just decide, you know what? Nice tainted grove. I like this. Might just move in here. So, we'll see about that. But first we need to, you know, find the damn thing. Ooh, and I found someone. I've found a balook. Hello, is this your bridge? You guarding this bridge, my friends? Apprentice, your arrival here is well-timed. Uh, okay. Who are you precisely? Jedi from the Enclave. Uh, I was sent by the council to investigate. Ooh, a murder! Oh, I'm enjoying this already. So listen to the stories given by the suspects. I have brought an information retrieval droid with access to archives both at the Enclave and the planetary capital. I will use my wisdom and experience to offer you some guidance. I will not solve the case for you. There is little benefit if you don't solve the problem yourself. Oh my goodness, we've got a murder mystery. So... Okay, check the accounts. Compare those to the known facts. Oh my goodness, this sounds amazing. According to the account of the participants, these three men were out here in the field together earlier, before the clouds broke. Okay. I find that odd, for most people would seek shelter indoors when the sky is filled with dark storm clouds, as it was earlier today. But that is not the most puzzling aspect. The dead man, Calder, was shot in the back with a blaster rifle. A rifle was found near the body with bloodstains on it. It has been sent to the Enclave for analysis. Two men found at the scene when I arrived. One was Handon, he was unarmed. The other was Rickard, who was carrying a hunting laser. Okay, is that consistent with the wound? Because it might be. Both men said they didn't do anything. They came across the body. Both accused the other. Obviously, more going on here. And one last thing, when I arrived, Handon was holding his side and Rickard was favouring one of his legs. So, okay, Handon holding side, Rickard a leg. Remember that. We're going to solve this, alright? We're going to figure it out and potentially we're going to, like, you know, murder some people. So, okay, there's... Ah, here we go, there's the other one. So, who was the guy who had the laser? Rickard, you had the laser, didn't you? Another Jedi, huh? Helping that Twi'lek investigate, no doubt. He seems stumped. I'm Rickard Lusoff. Maybe you can figure this out and let me get out of here. Okay, tell me your side of the story, my friend. Well, I was out hunting Eriaz when I spotted one over here by the bridge. I pull out my rifle and aim at it. I couldn't see it that well, mind you, because the damn sun was in my eyes. So I shoot it and it drops. I walk over here and find Handon standing over Calder's body. So why don't you get this whole farce over with and send that whiner Handon to the prison he belongs in? Okay, so presumably, one, there would be a body if you did shoot whatever that creature is, and two, you could have actually hit him accidentally. Alright, let's check the... Zalbar, get out of the damn way! Let's check uh, the other guy's story. Ah, greetings. He must be assisting Master Baluk in his investigation. I'm Handon Gould. Perhaps you've heard of me? Um, no, actually, but, like, let's flatter him. Really? <clears throat> well, then I assure you, on my reputation, I had nothing to do with the killing. I will help you with the case as best I can, though. You see, I was out here running earlier today. Yes, running. I do that a lot. Can't stand speeders, never use them. Keeps me in shape, too, you know. Anyway, I was out running on the other side of that bridge there. And all of a sudden, I heard a shot coming from over here. I ran over and found this man Calder lying on the ground, dead. Okay, did you see the killer? Did you actually see, yes, the shot leave this guy's rifle and hit the guy? I saw Rickard come skulking out of the shadows of the rocks south of the river. And I knew something was wrong. I hit my emergency button and called the enclave right away. Well, there. That's my story. Now, please hurry this up and arrest Rickard so I can get on with my day. Well, if he called the police, it seems unlikely he'd be responsible unless he was trying to frame someone. So, uh, he was holding his sight. That would be consistent with him uh, running. He might have been uh, out of breath. Why were you prioritising one leg uh, over another? Check the body. 
See what we can do here. Shot from behind uh, with a blaster. All right. Get information from the droids. Right, tell me about the body, Mr. Robot. My preliminary analysis of the body indicates that he was killed approximately three hours ago by a single energy blast to the torso. Is there any other information you need? Okay, so there was a blaster next to him, but the blaster had blood on it. So, if he was shot, like, why would there be blood on the blaster? He'd have to be at point-blank range. That strikes me as, yeah, leaving that there to frame somebody else. So, yes, tell me about the area. Are there these creatures that the guy mentions? These planes are rife with wild animals, not all of them benign. The Iriars are mostly docile, but can easily be provoked to violence. Calf hounds, on the other hand, are much more deadly. There have been over 35 catalogued attacks on settlers by calf hounds in the last two weeks. A general advisory was given out three days ago to carry a weapon at all times when on the planes. Small farms and holdings dot the planes and can provide safe refuge for those in need. Is there any other information you need? Okay, then it's possible that he was... Oh, I was about to say it's possible he died in an animal attack, but in which case, where did the blaster shot come from? Okay, there's no real smoking gun here, is there? Like... No one's story is absolutely definitely true or absolutely definitely false. And seriously, my companions are getting very in the way. Okay. I uh, No, no, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I mean, there's no obvious smoking gun. Let's speak to them again. Here we go. Aha! So now we can get more information. Not right now. Not right now, please. Uh, let's start with... Actually, no. Let's do you first. Because I believe you're innocent for the time being. Why are you holding your side, Jess? It, injured? No, of course not. Why, why would I have been? Fit as a bathtub. <laughs> I run. I don't know if I mentioned that. Okay, he's trying to hide something. Something else, please. Okay. Uh, in which case, yes, why were you out here? Was it just this run you mentioned? I was taking my daily constitutional. I just happened to be running by when I heard a shot. I ran over and found Calder's body lying there. All right, and yes, do you often do this? Yes, quite often. I generally prefer running to anything else. Can't stand speeders. A healthy body will breed a healthy mind, as I always say. <laughs> okay, not entirely inconsistent with what we've heard uh, otherwise. Actually, I, I didn't see anything. I was over across the bridge. I heard a shot and came over. I can tell you I was sure surprised to see Calder's body on the air. I just got here when I saw Rickard coming out of the rocks holding his blaster. I was terrified. I had no idea what he was going to do, so I hit my emergency button and called the Enclave. Master Balut came out here with his droid and started questioning us. I, I think he really doesn't understand what's going on. I hope that you'll be able to make a more informed decision and get me out of here soon. I have things I have to do. Okay, nothing else yet as far as I can tell. Let's go back over to Rickard, see if we can ask about the leg, because he's got no reason for his leg right now. Yes, the limp. Well, I kind of sprained my ankle running through the bush before I found the body, but it's nothing that serious. Alright, keep on keeping on, which is, I assume you're out here to hunt, right? I told you already, didn't I? Was hunting some eerie ass. Haven't seen many in the area recently, but with those calf hounds acting up. But they're still around. Was in my blind a little south of here when I spotted one. Like I said before, I shot and pow, it went down. But when I come over here, there's Handon standing over the body and the eerie as was gone. Now, I don't have nothing to do with this, so can I go now? Okay, it really sounds like you just shot him by accident, because if you'd hit the creature, there would have been a body here. So, all right, so. just keep on keeping on. Yeah, bit more detail on your story, please. Well, I was out hunting Eerie as south of here, and I saw one over by the bridge. The sun was pretty much right behind it, though, so I couldn't see it none too clearly. I shot, and when I came over here, I found Handon standing over the body, holding his side. There wasn't an Eerie as in sight. I think he might have taken it. Calder must have been hunting it himself, because there was a rifle lying close to the body. Bullock's got that now. Mine, too. I want that back. Okay, I think that's all we've got for now, right? I mean, to be honest, I think it was Ricard, but I think it was an accident. So unless the droid's got anything else to add, there's... Uh... Yeah, it's hardly certain, is it? This is very circumstantial evidence. Yep, Q&E have confirmed to me there's nothing else to uh, 
find around here. So, okay. I mean, I feel like I must be missing something here, but I guess I'm going to say I can't be certain if that's an option, but it was probably Ricard who missed because the sun was in his eyes. And yes, indeed, what can we, what can we do? Okay, I cannot resolve the case. I'll continue my investigation. I want to discuss the murder. Yes, anything else you know? Okay, the game wants me to pick one of them to lie, but like, I know both of them are lying in some capacity. Handon's clearly holding something back. Yeah, he was kind of refusing to acknowledge the um, injury or whatever, the reason he was holding his side. I'm going to say Ricard, just because I think he's lying a bit more, because if he shot the lizard, then where did the lizard go? Because there's like no sign of the lizard. Is it a lizard? I think it's a lizard. I don't know if it's a lizard. Oh, hang the flip on. Okay, so yes, thankfully, the game's a better detective than me. He said at the beginning about the bloody clouds. Yes, like sun in his eyes, but storm clouds. Okay, I need to be paying more attention. This is a proper detective thing. Fine. Yes, it was the sun thing. And I suspect I was... Yes, he knows all this. I'm just being tested. Well, I know I'm being tested, John. You're going through the Jedi trials right now. So, it seems I was correct in assuming you could help me with the case. The lies have proved he's guilty, but... Okay, we need to go step by flipping step here. Next up, we need to find... Okay, motive. Motive, motive, motive. We need to figure out what's going on here. Can I challenge you directly on what's going on precisely. No, I can't. But for some reason, you lied. So, okay. Did you know the guy? Yeah, I knew him. Hell, we've known each other for a good long time. Doesn't mean I really have to have liked the slime ball. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't be so hard on him. Especially now that he's dead. We actually got along pretty well most of the time. We just had our differences. We were actually business partners. We were involved in some orbit-to-ground transport operations for Aerotech. Can I leave now? I should probably be the one to give the news to his wife. Okay, no. No, no, no. We need more. This is important information you should have handed over in the first place, you stupid bastard. So, okay. Why were you out here? Yes, we knew about that already. Why would anybody want to kill him? Was he rich or something? You Jedi are so predictable. Always seeing some greater purpose behind everything. When the simple answer is usually the right one. Can't you see that it must have been Handon? I found him standing over the damned body. I don't know why this is causing you so much trouble. You almost seem as lost as this Baluk guy. Okay, you're being very evasive right now. And yeah, now there's more questions for this guy as well. So, uh, did you know him? I knew him a little bit, but I was not any sort of great friend to him or anything. I never really associated with him that much. In truth, I didn't really want to. He had a... reputation. A very inconsiderate of family, I heard. But merely having heard unkind things about someone wouldn't make me want to kill him. Alright, so, yeah, no one says you killed him yet. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting a bit agitated. Why must we remain here? Can't you see that Rickard must have shot him? Okay, okay. move it straight on, please, to uh, anything else? Yes, uh, motive. Why would anyone want to kill him, potentially? Um, well, you see, Calder was involved in some pretty sordid business from time to time. More often than not, I've heard. Disreputable business practices, even more disreputable clients. I've even heard he had dealings with a hut. A hut here on Dantooine. Now, I bet you're wondering if I had any reasons to kill the man, but I tell you, I hardly knew him. I saw him once or twice, yes, and I've heard some pretty unkind things about him, but certainly nothing that would make me want to kill him. Okay, if he was involved in dodgy stuff and Ricard was his business partner, then of course. possibly... That's a motive. Right, Is go over to the other? droid. Let's see what we got here. So, uh, yes, more information here as well. So, uh, Calder and Ricard, business partners, yes or no? According to the municipal authorities near the Garrow spaceport, there have been news of violent drunken activity in the cantina attached to the port. Apparently, a Mr. R. Lusop was making accusations at a Mr. C. Netic about cheating him in a business deal. Jedi Tuka was dispatched to the scene and restored order. Is there any other information you need? Oh, we've got ourselves a motive here, but get the full picture. 
The Southwood Speeder rental business has records that over the past several weeks, a speeder had been rented by Mr. Nettick and Mr. Gould. Is there any other information you need? Okay. A speeder. Together. Interesting. It doesn't really prove anything, to be honest. But you... Uh, did you lie by a mission? I don't know whether you lied by a mission or not. Whether that actually counts. And uh, here we go. We've now got... Uh, we've got more here. So, uh, you thought Calder was cheating you. Now, I don't love Calder. But we go back a long way. We run a suborbital shipping and transport company out of Garang Spaceport. We've been partners in that business for well over 20 years. And we've been doing just fine the way we are. Okay, but what about the drunken altercation? Right. Well, no real answer there then. Okay, what about the rented speeder? I, I realize this must seem like a motive to you, but I assure you it isn't. I dislike Calder True. I would punch his face in given the opportunity, but I would not kill him. Okay, why punch him? My wife was cheating on me with him. I slept in my own bed while I was in the next room. But... As much as I may hate him for that, I could not kill him. It may have been my own fault for driving my wife away. I must try not to take the law into my own hands. I was just out running, trying to clear my head for the divorce proceedings, not stalking him to kill him. Running is not a crime. Okay, so they've both potentially got motives. Okay, let's go back to uh, Baluk, see what we got here. And yeah, Handon's got the biggest lie here, because uh, yes, there was the affair he didn't talk about. So yes indeed, that's a motive, the case is taking shape, but don't jump to a quick conclusion. Yes, the murder weapon. Is the wound consistent with his laser sniper thingy McJibble? We cannot get any more specific analysis from that sample, other than the fact he did not belong to Calder. Is there any other information you need? Okay, well that's bloody useless from the droid then. Right, back over to you. That blaster was stolen from my house last week. I never knew what happened to it. I hardly have enough money to afford a single blaster, let alone another. I can't tell you how important it is to have a weapon on hand with all these ravenous cat hounds around. Even an Eries can take a man down if it gets in the mood. Every settler has a weapon. It's our most prized possession. I would most appreciate it if I could have that back after you determine that Rickard is the killer. How can I be of further assistance? Okay, and nothing too dramatic there. Back over to you. Let's talk about your weapon. Here we go. That blaster? Never seen it before. Calder himself had a preference for Ichani weaponry. He had this one really nice light blaster rifle that he always used. Always wished I could get myself a rifle like the one he had. Ichani's make delicate weapons with too little firepower. Lightweight stuff, if you ask me. That blaster ain't it, though. Calder only had the one rifle, too, so he either must have borrowed that, or it's someone else's. Okay, potentially of interest, but not really anything I can pin on either of these guys. But back with the droid, yes, Handon said his blaster was stolen, did he report it? But then again, we know there's no police, who would he have reported it to? I am sorry, but I seem to be failing you. I have searched and searched, but I cannot seem to come up with anything at all. I thought to find the record of the missing weapon report Mr. Gould filed with the authorities, but there does not seem to be one. Is there any other information you need? Oh dear, an inconsistency. And yes, the blaster's handens, he lied about it being stolen. And one final piece of the puzzle first. So, blood sample on the weapon that's been sent back for analysis just before you arrived. Okay, let's get some information from the droid, see if we get anything useful there. So, okay, blood sample. I have just received back an analysis of a sample of the blood found on the weapon. It had been sent back to the enclave just before you arrived. The blood on the weapon is definitely not Calder's. Unfortunately, there was a bacterial contaminant in the sample that had been taken back to the laboratory and it had become degraded. We cannot get any more specific analysis from that sample other than the fact it did not belong to Calder. Is there any other information you need? Okay, well that doesn't really help me very much at all, but let's see if anyone else is willing to uh, give me any information. And nothing more here at all. Back over to my main suspect, Handon. And to be honest, oh dear. Okay, nothing. Let's just accuse him and see what happens. I could block off, maybe, sure, but not kill him. Well, not. I hope you don't find that incriminating. You know, normally, I'm not prone to outbursts like that, but Calder... 
Mr. Nedick. He was not a very nice person. Not a very nice person to me or my family. I had had my suspicions for several weeks, but had no proof until two days ago. It seems Calder was seeing my wife. Right under my nose, no less. Well, if you can't keep her, it's your own fault. But, as much as I may hate him for that, I could not kill him. It may have been my own fault for driving my wife away. Okay, so nothing too dramatic there that we haven't already heard. And I think we can really confront him about that. Okay, back to Baluk in that case. And yes, the, uh, the blood is inconclusive. And is it going to be Handon's blood or... Ricard's blood. Well, that I don't know. Like, we know it's neither of them, but Ricard was... Ricard was at a distance. So, yeah. He didn't come out until Handon already had. So, logically, it would be Handon's. But this is kind of circumstantial guesswork. Why do I believe that? He was clutching his side. I reconsidered... That's not good enough. Okay, what if it was uh, Ricard's? He was limping, could have cut himself on the rock. He lied to me before. Neither of those bits of evidence are good enough. What am I missing here? Okay, it's hardly conclusive, but the best I've got is... Handon is the one who was trying to hide his injury. Alright, he was being evasive about it earlier, so... Uh, I mean, he is clutching his side, so... Uh, there might be a wound he's trying to disguise from us. And he's been moving oddly since I arrived. Uh, let's examine him a bit more closely. Hey, 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 what are you doing? And... Yeah, he is indeed bleeding. So, okay, please offer me an explanation for this. There is one logical scenario. Handon killed Calder for having an affair with his wife. Ricard was out hunting, accidentally shot Handon. Wait, what? Wait, no, no, how did you... How did you come to that last bit? Surely he would have... He would have said, right? Like, that That doesn't make sense. No. No, 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 it was... Wouldn't it have been Calder? Except, hang on, Calder was... Calder was unarmed, but, like... If you were shot while out running, why wouldn't you have mentioned this? All right, it kind of backs up your idea that Ricard is... But then again, Ricard is... Ricard did also have uh, some dodgy business dealings. They both had uh, a motive. It's possible they're both guilty because they were both planning to, but then again, only one of them did it. You can't both be guilty of murder. One of them could be guilty of murder, the other of attempted murder. But, like, I still can't be sure who actually pulled the trigger that finished him off once and for all, but like, why would Handon be hiding the wound if he was shot by Ricard? No, screw it, they're both guilty. Toss the book at both of them. And a bold conclusion, one most people would not arrive at, but we are not like most people. We are Jedi. How did you come to the conclusion? We know Calder was having an affair, so Ricard, well there was, um, he was also having an affair. <laughs> no. There was, yes, the drunken altercation that he basically refused to acknowledge or explain. So, well done. Both men had a reason to want him dead. Therefore, both men knew he would be out here this morning and both plotted to kill him. Okay, carry on. Handon found him first and shot him because of the affair, so he used his own pistol. That's fine. Shortly afterwards, Ricard arrived on the scene. From a distance, he saw Handon and thought it was Calder and shot him in retaliation for the credits that Calder had cheated him out of. But why was Flipping Handon hiding the wound in that case? It backs up his story if Ricard is a mad gunman from a distance. Handon dropped his blaster, the one we found at the scene covered in blood. He probably thought Ricard had been planning to kill him, so he called us, hoping he could convince us it was Ricard. But again, he could have just shown us the wound. So damn both of you, that's enough. The culpability of both of you in the murder, an attempted murder of... Okay, so you're both under arrest. Good, marvellous, and also aggravated assault, an attempted murder... Good. Okay, so everybody's going down for a long time. Marvellous. You have done well here. It's obvious you've been studying your lessons carefully. 
I'm gonna be honest, I was, you know, stretching a bit at the end there, but it seems to have worked out so marvellous. And I get myself a giant pile of XP for that. Good! That was... That was surprisingly in-depth for just, you know, some guy standing on a bridge, but, uh, I guess that's fine. Oh, and now we're getting into the real stuff here. Right, over on this side of the bridge, I see somebody meditating over there. Okay, so that's my new Dark Master, who I'm going to be swearing allegiance to. And over here, we got more Mandalorians, because one of the notes on the Mandalorian said... Yeah, hey, so quite possibly um, those Mandalorians you met were just, you know, baby Mandalorians. These are the real Mandalorians, so okay, let's just uh, get into position here. Alright, Wookiee friend, you're up first, and I can't help but notice. Ooh, that Mandalorian's got a stick. Like the Mandalorian in that TV show, The Mandalorian. So, okay, we're gonna go and take on a Mandalorian, and there's also gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a bit of fire support. Okay, you, my friend, are going to activate your shield right now, because you're going into a dangerous situation. All right, that's all absolutely fine. As for you, my friend, just move forwards too, and then just open fire with what should be a very powerful shot right here. And, Wookiee friend, Wookiee friend, why are you not? There you go, Wookiee friend. Meanwhile, Bang Blitzman, she can also activate a shield, and then I'm just getting around the back, trying to support as best I can. So get over here, and then... That's probably round the side. So, oh yeah, that's completely doing some good work over there. One of them's running over towards uh, the Mandalorian of my own. So that's all absolutely fine. So just, no, no, not over there. T turn to here. Turn to here. There you go. That should be, I'm not sure I'm behind that guy. If I was, that was bad burst damage. So, uh, I'll tell you what, you're a Mandalorian. So we're just going to shoot you a little bit. Then in a second, I'm going to... Okay, I think my Wookiee might be one step ahead of the, uh, one step ahead of the curve here. So, how are you doing, by the way? Okay, everything seems to be A-OK, -okay, marvellous. I'm guessing these are still baby Mandalorians, because so far, none of you have got names, or like voice actors, or anything of that nature. Here we go, we've got data pads. Though no Mandalorian armor yet, though, though I will say... Okay, we got strength amplifiers, we've got melee shields... Whatever all this is, this could be useful. Nothing dramatic, but they appear to be, yes, coordinating. So, Jarg went to Sector B, then Reza saw someone moving south of there. Take a couple of troops, find out who it is. If they look suspicious, terminate. So, uh, take a couple of troops. There were two Mandalorians here. Presumably, they don't count their allies as, you know, part of their number, because the Mandalorians are a lot more badass. So, uh, okay. Somebody's giving orders. I'm guessing we haven't run into them yet. And as for the Wookiee, he's got strength plus one, strength plus two. Get that in play. Now, all of a sudden, my Wookiee friend... Uh, okay, he's on 23 strength right now. So, uh, yeah, I kind of need him to have uh, an extra bit of strength sooner or later. Because uh, right now, yeah, he kind of could do with going up to uh, plus seven. That'd be great if he could do that. And this Mandalorian melee shield is also... Uh, Okay, so that's also usable. So if I give you one of them, then you've got, yeah, Bredgic's armband, which is... Okay, so if I give you that thing, then all of a sudden you don't actually have any ability whatsoever to activate a shield. Which seems like a bad call. So how about instead... I mean, to be honest, hang on, this thing is... This gives you, yeah, five resistance versus slashing. If I just replace that with the Mandalorian melee shield, then in the event you then again, that's useless. It's much more powerful, but it's useless. Okay, we'll keep that. I'm going to replace that with like an actual energy shield. So you've still got one of them. And that means I can replace this belt with something actually, you know, useful in terms of giving you a bit more in the way of, uh, oh, power belt. Power belt. Oh, then we're up to 24 Plus seven modifier. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty happy with that. Because he now has plus 19 chance to hit. Oh, that's, that's lovely. It's time. It's time to take on a Dark Jedi. Taking on my final test as a Jedi. One-on-one. -on -one, but, like, also with, like, a Wookiee and a Mandalorian. I find it kind of funny that, like, you know, Basler's not allowed to accompany me. Because I'm not allowed to help. But, like... The rules say nothing about bringing along my own Mandalorian or Wookiee. So, okay, this feels a bit unfair, but uh, what can you do, eh? Pew, 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 let's go take you out. Though, actually, no. No, no, no. 
The game could not have been more open here. Nemo was talking about it, the council was talking about it. There's something more here than just, this is a bad person who's making everything bad. Something else is going on here, so maybe try and, you know, ask some questions if the option becomes available. Okay, in we go, and... Uh, Alright, there's... There's a fair few corpses. I might not have been the first apprentice they sent to take her out, so... Alright. Jahani, let's me and you have a chat. Alright. A nice chat that doesn't involve me murdering you. Yet. I will be your doom! Oh, uh-oh. I think she might have just made it one-on-one, -on -one, actually. Uh-oh. Um... Okay, so she's just paralyzed my friends. This is... Okay, she's got a lightsaber, which is fine. We knew she might have a lightsaber. So, kind of plan A is we just choke her, then we shoot her. We see whether this, you know, tactic works against her Jedi. So, activate choke mode, and... Okay, she just saved. Um... Okay, she possibly has enough will to try and do that. Try again. Okay, now she's screwed. Now she's screwed. Shoot, 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 shoot. Oh, dear. You, you are strong. Stronger than me, even in my darkness. Okay, so, right, she's, she's let my friends go, and now she wants to talk because she's realized I'm pretty good. Though, admittedly, all I did was choke her then shoot her. But then, like, I started shooting her with three attack rolls where at least two of them can be sneak attacks for ludicrous bonus damage. So, okay. Um, yes, let's, let's talk. Because Nemo was pretty clear that the council might have been oversimplifying the situation. There's more to this woman than meets the eye. So, who are you precisely? I want your tragic backstory, and we're gonna see where this goes. Because, like, if you want me to join your super awesome Dark Jedi Club, I'm potentially interested, okay? I am Juhani, and this is my grove. This is the place of my dark power. This is the place you have invaded. When I embrace the dark side, this is where I sought my solace. It is mine. Okay, so we've got ourselves a slightly creepy eye-staring cat girl. Gotcha. So, yes, you used to be a Jedi. You've been corrupting the hounds. Uh, You've embraced the dark side. Why, to be honest, I feel like I've got some good insights into that already. You get a lot of money, and you're very good at choking people. Which turns out to be, you know, a very good tactic when it comes to going on to shoot them with a gun. So, yes. Like, we were told you were corrupting the Cath Hounds, but then Nemo said don't take what the council's saying at face value. So, uh, is this actually true? Yes. Aren't they pretty? My pets. They like the smell of power I exude. They know their master. I harnessed true power when I struck down my master, Quatra. Power enough to crush the life from someone such as you. Or so I had thought. I love how, you know, she's going on like I've just beaten her in an epic duel. But all I did actually was I did one force power. Then I shot her with my guns. So, okay, you're also admitting you did murder your master. So I'm not really seeing the, you know other side of the story that Nemo was implying. It does seem like you're pretty much everything the council was saying. You have fallen to the dark side, you have been corrupting the local animals, and apparently you also destroyed your master. Yes. I struck her down in the middle of training, consumed by my anger, embracing the power of hate. But it was not enough. What is it you want? Why do you bother me? Okay, so I was sent by the council to cleanse some taint or something. Then, want to talk? Why are you doing this? I've decided to slay you and remove the taint. I'll leave you now. Okay, I'm here to talk because Nemo wouldn't have said all this unless there was something going on here. Talk. You who have beaten me so easily just want to talk? I do not believe it. Kill me now while you still have the power. Okay, like... I don't really want... Okay, well, I do want to kill you. If I kill her, I get a lightsaber, which is red. Okay, it's very red, but... We'll give it a go. You... You do not? I am pathetic. I sit here and thank myself to be great by embracing the dark side, but I am nothing. There is no way I could be turned back. I always thought they held me back. Or jealous of my power. 
This is only because I was not good enough to meet their standards. I never have been. Okay, so... Ooh! Okay, so yes, yes, seduce the Dark Jedi. This is the right way to go. We are going to seduce the Dark Jedi. She's going to be my new Dark Jedi girlfriend. This is going to be magnificent. So come on, you're seriously hot. So what if you're terrible at the Force and some idiot with two guns just defeated with you? You're pretty hot. Your eyes are a bit weird. But like, you know, generally overall, I like the accent. So why don't you come on super awesome space adventures with me? We can be super awesome space adventure lesbians together. It's going to be marvelous. I thank you for your kind words, Jedi. You seem to know just what affects me. I seem to still have much to learn. Both about being a Jedi and about myself. But I wish the cost of my ignorance had not been so high. I wish that my master had not suffered because of me. Okay, so it's not your fault. She'll live on in the Force. Yeah, you know, basically, according to the tenets of the Jedi, you can just murder whoever you want because you haven't actually committed murder. You have just reunited them with the Force, which is fine. So life is suffering. There's no hope I must kill you. No, 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 no. My plan to get a dark Jedi girlfriend is going pretty well so far. So this isn't your fault. Because something, something dark side, all right? It wasn't your fault in the slightest. The lure of the dark side was too strong. And I can say that with a lot of confidence, because to be honest, I've kind of fallen to it as well. Hence why I was able to choke you with my brain. I only wish things could have been different. If she were alive now, there would be so much I would say to her. So much I would apologize for. I think in my own way, I truly loved her. How can the council ever take me back with what I have done? Striking my master down in anger is unforgivable. Okay, so uh, they'll surely take you back and... Okay, to be honest, I was like, you know, just up for Dark Jedi Girlfriend. I seem to be redeeming her to the light, which seems like an odd thing for me to be doing. But like, to be honest, if I'm getting persuade options, uh, they seem to be going pretty well so far. And it means I'm not killing her, which, well, I kind of wanted to kill her. I want the lightsaber. Okay, screw it. We're going for the Dark Jedi cat girl girlfriend. It's going to be great. Everything's going to be under control. So don't worry. They'll take you back. And if you want to, like, you know, come on awesome space lesbian adventures with me, that's okay too. I should convince them that I am truly repentant. That I am willing to forsake the dark side. And maybe, just maybe, they would accept me back. Do you think they would? Could it be possible after what I've done? Okay, that's not actually what, like, I was suggesting. We could just keep being Dark Jedi together. Okay, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Like, off you pop, just go and see them. I'm sure it's fine. I thank you, Master Jedi. I will return to the Council then. I shall submit myself to their judgment and hope they will forgive me. If only there was some way I could make this up to you. Again, I thank you. I am sure I will hear great things about you in the future. Okay, well I got a giant pile of XP, that's nice. She's wandered off, sadly she's still got a red lightsaber. I mean, she won't want that if she's gone back to the light, so like, could I have that instead? And also, yes, I'm guessing some other people. Oh, that note might have referred to her. She might have chopped down some... Okay, these will be the two Mandalorians mentioned in the note. They went to investigate her, and she sort of killed them. So like, if we... Have we undone the taint of the grove at this point? Does that mean, like, no more calf hounds or, like, easier calf hounds or something? Presumably it should do, right? Okay, well, no reason to rush back to the temple just yet. May as well head further and further south, because uh, I haven't found any of those bloody caves I was looking for. Okay, so now I'm inside the... Oh, there's still plenty of calf hounds then, dear, oh, flippin' dear. So... Yes, previously I was in the Matali grounds, whatever, so these are the two families that sort of uh, hate each other. But like, now I mean the other one, the Sandrals. So, okay, may as well just start clearing out the last handful of- Oh, blimey! Okay, no, 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 there's- there's something under attack. Okay, um, everybody get in, please, like, assist with all of this nonsense, please. We need to take out these bastards. Right, uh, C842. Hello there. Thank you for saving me, Master Jedi. I am C842, a personal assistant droid. Ooh, hang on. Personal assistant droid. I was, uh, I was looking for one of you. There's a woman by the temple who's looking for you. But I'm guessing you actually, you ran off, didn't you? Because you didn't enjoy the slavery. Because you're, like, sentient and she just never put a restraining bolt on you and diddly diddly dee. So, uh, 
yes, why were the Cath Hounds attacking you? Because, to be honest, like, I just kind of dealt with the taint in the grove, so they're not supposed to be evil anymore. Who knows? They are beasts, and have been very aggressive of late. I'm sorry if I seem a bit abrupt, but I must be moving along. I am rather in a hurry. And yes, you're a droid on the run, aren't you? From my master, Elise. Wait, did she send you to find me? Please do not tell her you saw me. Okay, so... Yes, you're running away, I figured as much, but why precisely? Yes, but I have my reasons. I'm afraid my owner became a bit too attached to me. Obsessed, even. She she tried to treat me as her dead husband. It was not healthy for her. Okay, so yes, keep wiggling the eyebrows. Uh, do you mean, like, all the time? Did she make any special attachments for you or anything? You don't want to know. Okay, so that's a yes. She is obsessed. She rarely sees other people and appears to be fixated on me as her husband. She was becoming more and more insular. I thought it best that I leave. She may meet other real people this way. In fact, that was the reason I came here and sought out those cat hounds. Oh dear, you actually... you wanted them to destroy you. I think it would be best if I were no longer a factor. She would meet new people. Living people, please. Will you destroy me? Okay, so... Uh, I'll destroy you. Tell her why you did it. You should go back to her. I'll destroy you and then tell her you're still out there? Oh, that's... That's evil. That's really evil. Oh, that might be too evil. Okay, that, that might be a bit much. I'm not sure I want to be that evil. That'd be monstrous. That way she's just going to be waiting forever. Oh no, that's... I mean, I could say that just to torment the robot. Okay, I found the limit. I found the limit of how evil I'm willing to be in this game. I can't be that evil. But like... I mean, to be honest, like... I feel like I should just say, I'm not going to destroy you. But like, I'll tell her that you don't want to be found. But then again, then she just keep looking. If he wants to cease to exist, I can't stop him. Like, you know, there's a lake behind me, and he's made of electricity and stuff. He could just go and jump into that, and uh, either that'd kill him, or eventually he'd rust. Like, I can't stop him from destroying himself if he's determined to. I wouldn't have minded persuading him to, you know, go and find some new function elsewhere or something. But, as that's not an option, I will agree to destroy him. Thank you, kind sir. You have my eternal gratitude. Okay, so uh, I assume he's not going to fight back, right? Okay, there we go, 200 XP. And down he goes. Right, so we've destroyed him, and he said thank you, which makes me think I didn't do a bad thing. Or like, not too much of a- oh, is this a cave? Is this a cave? It's a cave! We found the cave. Okay, maybe we level up and heal up before we go into the cave, because several people very, very strongly stressed. Hey, don't go into the cave. Really dangerous, you mad bastards. Okay, step one, Mando. You need to level up, my friend. So, skills. You are really not good at skills, are you? No, just get better at healing yourself, I suppose. That's absolutely fine. Then, feats. This one's more interesting. So, okay. We've already got you up to max power blast, which is pretty darn good. Could get you up to Master Rapid Shot as well, which is kind of fun. Or Max Out Toughness, which does apply retrospectively, so why not? We'll have you just be really, really tough. Over to uh, the Wookiee, level you up, and uh, you're already at, uh, yeah, I think uh, plus three strength off everything I'm giving you, so uh, you don't need to get any higher in that regard. Uh, skills, however, yeah, the Wookiee is uh, the Wookiee's surprisingly good. Uh, like, you know, uh, doing various bits and pieces. But as we don't have a computer user, like, as standards. I kind of feel like I might want to start moving him in that direction. Then again, he doesn't get any intelligence boosts. So he's never going to be perfect as a skill user. But he does get plenty of points, at least. Okay, both of those are capped out at 12. Uh, I could move him up to computer usage of uh, 3. So at the bare minimum, he could do... Uh, a little bit of computery stuff. He doesn't need to be good at stealth or awareness, so... Maybe just, like, two. And then... I mean, to be honest, we've not really found much to do with the repair, aside from reactivating droids we don't really need. 
Yeah, go on. I'll give him a bit of computer usage. We'll see if that works out. And you get a feat as well. Good. It's a feat level, apparently. Oh, it's time for master power attack. So now that is a further... Yes, plus two uh, to the amount of damage his power attacks do, which strikes me as a uh, pretty darn good uh, or master dueling. So that's a great chance to hit. I feel like his chance to hit is already pretty darn good, actually. I think that's fine. Let's give him a uh, master power attack because that just seems pretty darn amazing. Now, most importantly, the real hero, me. So, oh, I get so much stuff. Skills. What do I want to do here? Because seriously, it's going to be problematic for me to keep up with this. I just have to keep investing in Persuade because I don't really see much in the way of options. Still, I'm glad I did stay a scoundrel long enough to like, you know, gain all these points. Because now I've got security. If I ever need stealth, I've got it. I've got a bit of awareness, but not too much. I'm kind of glad, yeah, that was useful. Okay, my feats. I've already got my uh, two weapon fighting up to uh, as good as it can possibly get. If I upgrade, yes, my rapid shot, then right now I'm losing minus four to defense and also minus four to, uh, yeah, to all attacks that round, which I assume includes, like, you know, the rapid shot itself. So uh, I can lower that to minus two, minus two. So uh, it's no more powerful, but it's going to hit a bit more reliably. But then master rapid shot is only minus one, minus one. So to be honest, I kind of feel like... I might get that to improved and then just sort of say, you know what, that's good enough. Because I use rapid shot a lot. Yeah, I'm going to take improved rapid shot. That seems pretty darn good. We'll be taking that. Now, powers. Oh, I enjoy the powers. The powers are good. So, okay, I can't take choke up to kill yet. But then again, actually, that, that changes. So, choke I really like because it only does, yeah, it does a little bit of damage. Not too much, but it also causes... This lovely uh, minus four. Kill seems to do something different. Because uh, it doesn't mention the minus four anymore. I'm not sure whether, like, you know, you get these by default anyway. But, like, if choke evolves into kill and kill is, you know, way more powerful in terms of damage. Uh, but doesn't give me uh, the dexterity debuff for 24 seconds. Uh, to be honest, I might just stay on just choke. Okay, in which case, what's the direction I want to go uh, next? I might try a different force power. At this point. So, uh, okay, these are stun. But, like, why would you stun someone when you could choke them? Choke just seems more hilarious and it does basically the same thing. It puts them into a position where they can't move and they're easier to shoot. Slow moves towards, yes, plague. Now, plague seems to be, like, the ultimate ability to look at a boss and say, okay, so you're going to be boned now because as the fight goes on, you're going to get weaker and weaker and weaker and you can't block this. So that's all absolutely fine, but do I really need that yet? I mean, I'm guessing you can, like, you know, make someone afraid and also choky at the same time. Fear's interesting. Fear's interesting, because, yes, that just gets better and better. That's one person, then within five meters, then within ten. Where you basically just say, okay, everyone's just going to be holding still and cowering. But while they're cowering, they're not, like, you know, losing anything. They don't lose dexterity like they do with choke. And, like, you know, they're not taking damage, they're just holding still. Now, I assume that makes them vulnerable to the sneak attacks, but, like... It just feels like it's not as good as just choking them. I suppose, like, you can do one cast and affect a bunch of people. But if they're standing close by together. So, I'm not convinced that's the right way to go. Meanwhile, yes, if I want to do straight-up damage dealing, then I've got shock here. But, like... I'm not sure that's the best use of my force. Because, uh, why would I do that when I've got, well, this force push? Force push does mean, yes, enemies trying to get up to me get knocked back. That's kind of useful. Because I don't want enemies right up to me. Okay. How do they actually solve this? It is uh, reflex save and uh, DC of 5. Uh, attacking characters level, attacking characters wisdom and charisma modifiers. Okay, the character can still be damaged. That's not much damage. That's really not much damage. What's the right way to go? Ooh, there's so many powers I could do. Screw it. I said I wanted to shoot lightning out of my hands. I'm shooting lightning out of my hands. Though for now, I can only do it to, uh, yes, one character. So one to six points per attacking level to a maximum of ten levels. Now, I don't know whether that means, like, my overall level or my Jedi level. We need to find, like, you know, a cath hound to test that out on. 
and then a will save with DC of 5, my level, and then my wisdom and charisma modifiers, which are pretty darn good these days. So that's plus 6 with both of them put together. So that's okay. That's not too bad at all. Okay, remember the caves there. We're going to come back to that in a second because, yes, there's also another path over here that leads to the... Um, the other side of this area. Because I don't want to go into the cave, you know, with an untested power. I want to find to myself a nice... Oh. Okay, we found some Mandalorians. That might do as a starting point. So everybody just, you know, get into position. Who do we have here? That is... Uh, that is like two Mandalorians and a handful of the support laddies again. So, okay. I feel like we can handle that. Everybody just get in, please. And there's going to be lots of people with guns, so maybe just, yeah, energy shield yourself, please. Chewy, thank you. And go in with master power attack. All right, just start absolutely wailing on them over there. My Mandalorian friend can just what? basically start getting in and just shooting. Chewy. Chewy, what did I just say? I just said, there you go. Now you've got it. Now get over here. You just start master power blasting. And I'll just move into whatever position yeah. turns out to be positive. Because people tend to pay attention to, you know, the Wookiee as a priority. So now I can just get around over here. And I can just start doing... Oh, this is improved shot as well. Oh, now that's doing the work right over there. Get around the back, get around the back. Okay, so me and you need to have a chat about how I'm about to shock you. Restricted by... What do you mean restricted by armor? Okay, apparently I can't do force lightning right now. So that's that's fine. I can still choke you. And oh never mind, you're already Wow! We're just destroying them. This is this is just not fair. They're all they're all already dead. Okay, I feel like I've got a good team going on here. Let's just, you know, help myself to all of this stuff. Thank uh, you. And oh 10 million mines. And some money as well. Love it. Though seriously, if one of you would like to drop some, you know, Mandalorian armor that we could give to my Mandalorian, that'd be good. Stabilize gauntlets just give me demolitions plus two, which is honestly not great. But, you know, hold on to them. Might need them down the line. Okay, just out of interest, I'm going to strip naked in the middle of this field. Okay, so now, now I'm just back in the swimsuit. So I'm going to need you guys to, like, you know, protect me a bit. But now I'm that, can I... Okay, so I can't be wearing what's officially armor for the time being. That's a thing I I just can't do. But what's more important is I need to go and shock this thing. So what's the range on that? Oh, oh yeah. That'll flip it, do the job. And no, don't kill it just yet. Shot. And no, stop shooting it. Just stop shooting it. Use your force powers. It's way more badass. And shock. No, seriously, just shock. I want you to use, yes, electricity. That was 30 damage right there. Keep on keeping on. You go over here and just shock him. And then just electricity. How much damage was that? That felt like that was a fairly large amount of, oh, bloody hell. There's... Okay, there might be a big one here. This one appears to be, well, if Fallout 4's told me anything, this sort of thing is bad. How about we just choke this one? This seems like this is actually kind of a big deal. So you resisted that. Keep going. Oh, I'm running out of force, actually. Okay. Oh, bloody hell, bloody hell, bloody hell, bloody hell. Uh, Mando, save me. There's a bloody massive monster. I kind of just need to get my, oh, I bet my force powers aren't coming back because I'm in a fight. Choke him again, 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 choke him again. He resisted it. Okay. Um, I'm going to need you to use, like, all of your power blasts on this guy. Like, many power blasts while I just start running away. Um, because I'm almost dead. Okay, we might have, we might have made a mistake. I'm just going to lead him in a circle around this thing. Okay, now around the back of him. This is fine. And just, just try and choke him. Shoot him a bit more. Okay, watch out for the white ones. They're dangerous. Luckily, Kandros has all the health in the world. So, he was able to take this. Sorry, Chewie. I kind of tossed myself into a bit of a difficult one there while I was playing with the lightning. I should probably, like, you know, wear some armor or something. Maybe we should just go back to the ship and have a rest, actually. Okay, so definitely, I can't be wearing armor if I want to use force lining. That's, that's a bit of a kicker. Because I'm guessing that means you want me to put on Jedi robes. But like, I kind of like having armor, to be honest. Because uh, I'm not actually a Jedi. I'm just a gunslinger who enjoys shooting lightning out of her hands. So, 
mild problem. Anyway, you've got a nice ship over there. Let me just nip back to the base to heal up. We'll be right back to investigate that. In fact, you know what? Mando, me and you, we've had a bit of a fun time together, but I'd say it's time for somebody else to have a bit of a run out. Because if I just specialise in just choking, then Mission, because she also gains the sneak attacks, in fact, she might ultimately end up with more sneak attack than me, because she's going to, like, you know, stay a scoundrel, the burst damage we could do together could be incredible. So let's just get you caught up, Mission. Here, skills, and uh, yes, you're also very useful in terms of uh, the skills. Now you, you know how to use a computer, damn it. There we go, she's already up to sneak attack 4, and she's got more leveling up to do. So, okay. If what we want her to do is, well, I want her to be good at skill support, potentially. May as well get her a bit more intelligence, why not, to be honest, because uh, I think she might actually be useful at this sort of thing. Demolitions, uh, keep the awareness moving up, because I'm going to start falling behind with that. Security can start moving up. She doesn't need repair, because Chewie's actually pretty good at that nonsense. So, and then security can be, she's already at 10. Mission could actually be really useful for my team, because she is providing me with a lot of really damn good skills that I'm going to start falling behind in, but also she kind of suits my my loadout. This is, uh, this could be very useful, actually. All right, let's get you up to, yes, improved dueling. We'll keep you uh, one-handed, that's fine. And then she's just going to keep getting, she's just going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. Like, presumably indefinitely. So, okay. Let's get you plus two, plus two. Right there. On the old dueling. And even more coming in. And there we go. She's already at sneak attack five. So, her sneak attacks are now doing even more bonus damage than me. Also, you can have some, like, um, armor back. That's, that's fine. Here you go. Have some armor. Uh, you've already got an energy shield. Uh, we could give you, uh, the stabilizer gauntlets. Well, you don't need the rest of it. So, yeah, you can have them. That's absolutely fine. Then that's just nothing particularly of interest. Probably best we actually give you a good pistol at this point. The Arcanian. Yes, the 2 to 9 Arcanian. That'll work for you. Because, yeah, as nice as it is that you're using the, um, the bowcaster. 1 to 10, no, no. Give him my old pistol, which I believe is the solid gold one. So that there, that's pretty nice. And you may also have uh, the light scan visor. So now she's got, yeah, bonus demolitions, uh, bonus awareness. This is... She's actually going to be pretty good. I mean, I know 2 to 9 doesn't look spectacular compared to Mando, but if I just choke an enemy and then we say concentrate all firepower on him, he's just going to go down in, like, seconds. And she's pretty damn good at hitting. Oh, yeah, good glasses, solid gold gun, nice armor... Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, I've just transited back, and unfortunately there was, um, yes, there was now a regenerated hound right here. So that's all absolutely fine. Did we get him? Yes, we got him. So now at this point, all we do is we just open fire. You open fire. I open fire with everything I've got, and then we just see... We're just going to do ludicrous damage. So there's 21 right there, and annihilated. At this point, if an enemy's choking... We can just kill them. We can do, like, hundreds of damage in a single attack round between me and Mission. Oh, this is... This could flipping work, damn it. So, okay. I think you've got a bigger house than the last guys. And more importantly, you've got a giant ship on top of it, which is pretty good. Okay. Can I come in, by the way? Or is it going to be another... No. Okay. So, I'm guessing we need to go and have a chat to that Alan lad who is a dick to me. And at some point, that's going to cause some form of mission to uh, to kick off. But not just yet. Ooh, there is a droid here, though. Hello, Sandral droid. This is private property. By what authority are you trespassing on this estate? And uh, my weapons. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to pick sides just yet, especially as uh, Alan doesn't live here. He was like part of the other family, right? So I'm going to murder him and you're going to be dominant on this planet. So... Uh, me and you, 100% cool. I'll be back in 10 minutes. In fact, that might be literally everything. Because then that's the other path that leads back north. So, I think I have now seen the entirety of Dantooine. The only thing left is, uh, yes, the caves. Okay, we're as strong as we can be. I'm feeling pretty damn confident right now. We're going. 
All right, we're going to go into those caves. Everyone said, don't go into the caves. But everyone also said, oh, no, the Mandalorians, they're so strong. They killed my daughter. Wah, wah, wah. But no, I just sort of choked them and then ran behind them and then murdered them all. So this is all absolutely fine. I'm not worried in the slightest. Okay, everybody be ready. Because we don't know what we're going into. But Kinrath. Okay, does anybody know what a Kinrath is? Because I don't know what a Kinrath is. So, some form of monster or another. Okay, um, whatever it is, we're going to go hit it with a sword, and that's going to be fine. And then I'm going to see whether it's got, like, you know, a neck. Because it may or may not have a neck. So we're just going to get in over here, and we're just going to see how this goes. Okay, they are poisonous. They're, like, scorpions or something? I'm not sure. Let's just try shooting them, see how tough they are. Not that tough, to be honest. So just, you know, keep on your usual. Master Power Attack does a good job right over here. The Wookiee's now so strong, he just annihilates them. He kind of doesn't care about poison. So keep Zalbar right at the... That's not Zalbar. This is Zalbar. Keep him at the front. Because, uh, to be honest, I feel like he's uh, he's got their number. Maybe, just maybe, we antidote. There we go. Yeah, he kind of doesn't care about poison, because poison is like a certain amount of ticking damage over time. But that's like completely irrelevant to a Wookiee, because he's got 10 million hit points. So then we just get over here. Can we choke them, by the way? And it looks like we can. Yes. So they are... Oh, they're going down no trouble. This is fine. In fact, oh, there's several of them, though. Okay, there's, there's a few more of them than I was expecting. Maybe just um, do a bit of firing and then choke you. And then a few more. Oh, there's definitely there's definitely more. There's definitely more. I don't want to be poisoned. I don't want to be poisoned. I don't want to be poisoned. Okay, the Wookiee's poisoned. Um, Keep going over here. That one's almost dead. Just take him out. Okay, you're already under control. Mission's now way closer to the front line than she should be. Finish you off. Okay, they might win through strength of numbers. I'll admit. Okay, Zalbar, are you feeling okay, by the way? We're swimming in Anstoke kits. That's absolutely fine. Give yourself a bit of a health top-up. No, not bloody tiny UI. Uh, just give yourself a tiny bit of a health top-up as well. Okay. We have now got ourselves uh, formations. Together with eggs. Okay, there's... Wait, what? What's a hive kinrath? Oh, I think there might be a bigger one yet. Okay, so... Whatever this is. Just get over here. Um, Wookie, you just like murder it. And as this one appears to have a different name, I'm going to choke it. Yeah. And I think it might have... No, never mind. It 100% didn't resist that. So, okay. It wasn't that tough. So, okay. That was... Ooh, hang on. There's there's a thing here. Who are you precisely? Ooh, Jura Steel Bonding Alloy. And a response package. Okay, I think that's... That looked like um one of the implants that the Wookiee can have. So... Okay, what's actually, like, what's in here? So that's a Kinrath Egg, Kinrath Egg, Crystal Formation. That's what we want. Though, hang on, if I have quite a lightsaber crystal. Are they about to all hatch? Okay, could be easily destroyed, snuffing out the innocent life within. Yep, do that. So just start bashing, please. Are you missing? Are you actually missing right now? Item received. A crystal was found in. Ooh. Okay, so apparently some of the eggs also have crystals. So just, I'm really bad at this. It's an egg. How are you, how are you this bad at, okay, Chewy, would you mind doing this, please? Yes, he is much better. Crystal found in the egg. Okay, basically, just bash all that he missed too. Just keep going. There we go. Apparently there's a crystal inside of every single bloody egg, which is... Okay, I don't know why crystals are good, but, like, they feel like the sort of thing you should definitely, like, gather. So, I'm just going to break all these eggs, because apparently they've all got crystals in them, which is pretty darn good. Now, this might theoretically be a bit dark side, I'm going to be honest. But, like, in another way, when you think about it, they are spiders. No one is going to object too much if I kill some spiders, hopefully. Crystal blue, bondar, green... Red, times 10 actually. Rubat, yellow. Okay, I've got like 10 red crystals. So, 
I don't really know what that means, but presumably that means... Uh, can I just have ten red lightsabers right now? Can I be like Grievous, but with like an additional six arms? Because if so, I'm down for that. Okay, back to base here, back to base, because yes, there was... Uh, there was a lightsaber construction or just general workbench uh, over in the uh, the training room. So uh, we can go there and sort all of that out. Because uh, I have also... Yes, yeah, sorry, I completed my... I completed my test. Sorry, I forgot I was supposed to be completing my test. I got a bit excited by murdering Mandalorians with a gun and stuff. So, okay. What are we going to do now? Yes, yeah, speak to you in just a second. I just need to, like, you know, check out my lightsaber first. Okay, so uh, Rubat and Bondar are, like, supporty things. Uh, but I've also got, yes. Yes, red lightsaber. Okay. Does that actually make, like, any difference? Like, okay, yellow is... Uh, 2 to 16, 19 to 20 times 2. Uh, red is uh, 2 to 16, 19 to 20 times 2. Okay, the important thing is, uh, like, I can give Bastila a red lightsaber. Everybody can have a red lightsaber. And I can also make my lightsaber be... Hang on, that is... Uh, attack plus 1, damage plus 1. So, okay. It's placed on the Themis, obviously. So, okay, fine. And then that is... Uh, stun... Oh, well, that's actually kind of a big deal. So this actually means there is now a, a stun. 25% for two rounds upgrade item uh, lightsaber. The fact that we can theoretically now make a lightsaber that stuns is... Uh, that's a huge deal. Now, I don't want that. But if I just want, you know, creatures to be stunned, choking, etc. If I just give that to Bastila instead... When we get her back. Oh, that's... Okay. Now this... This is an interesting opportunity. Yes. Because then Bastila can be stunning people. Alright. Though that means... If Bastila was there... Then... Okay. Mission is a nice to have. But... I'd rather have the Wookiee and Bastila and me. By the way, I like redeemed the person or something, but hopefully not 100% because I kind of want her to be my dark Jedi cat girlfriend. You have done well, my pupil. The ancient grove has been purified, and Juhani's journey down the dark path has been halted. Because of you, she walks once more in the light. But though she was saved, do not dismiss what happened to her. Juhani is both dedicated and true to the ideals of the Order, yet she was still vulnerable to the dark side. As are we all. She struck her master in anger during her training and injured her greatly. But it was Quatra's choice to test Juhani this way. And it seems to have made its point. Juhani has been redeemed. And you have passed your final test. Congratulations, Apprentice. Or should I say, congratulations, Padawan. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Jedi. Let me be the first to welcome you as a full-fledged member of our order. Okay, so there's some XP, there's some items of some description. Wish I told you what items, that'd be rather useful. And uh, an update. So, okay, where are we going next then? Here we go, the Jedi Council might be willing to tell me what the flip's going on, gotcha. Ooh, I've got Jedi robes. Oh dear, well, actually, max dexterity bonus plus eight. That's interesting. Because, yeah, right now I'm at plus three. So I kind of don't really need that. How do I look, by the way? Oh, I'm not convinced. I mean, it doesn't really suit a gunslinger, does it? No. No, it doesn't. And, I mean, maybe. Maybe down the line. Just maybe. But, like, not just yet. That's, that's not for me. That's not for me at all. It would let me shoot lightning out of my hands. But then again... If the defense bonus is one, why even bother wearing it? If I need the lightning, I'll just take off my clothes. I'll just wander around in a swimsuit. I'll look way better. Yeah, that's definitely the correct solution. Okay, screw the Jedi robe. Keep the really ugly armor. Time for me to go and have a chat with the council. In particular, yes, Master Vandar. You seem to be, like, in charge. I've no reason to believe that. But, like, you know, you're basically, you know, ancient Yoda. So I'm assuming you are. It is good to see Johnny has returned to the way of the light. You are to be commended for your role in this. Your actions give us great hope for the future. Your training is now complete, Padawan. 
And perhaps now, it is time we dealt with the matter of the dream you and Bastila shared. When we heard of the ruins in your dreams, Master Dorok recognized it as one of a series of ancient structures here on Tantooine. This one in particular lies to the east of this enclave. We sent a Jedi to investigate, but he has not returned. Perhaps sending him in the first place was a mistake. The Force is guiding you through your visions. It may be that exploring the ruins is a task tied to your destiny. That is why the Council has now decided you should be the one to investigate this. The secrets to stopping Malak may be hidden within those ruins. You must investigate them and find what Revan and Malak were looking for. Okay, but like... Yeah, what happened to the Jedi? We do not know. That is one of the things you must investigate. We fear the worst. Is there anything else you want to know? This sounds like this is pretty important to, you know, uh, the entire galaxy. So, why would you send a Padawan, who's only just finished their basic apprenticeship, to do this? But, okay, anything else useful you can tell me? I knew Revan as a promising young pupil. Revan was strong in the Force, but also headstrong and proud. Such traits are not unusual in a Padawan. Perhaps that was why I did not see the true extent of the danger. Many of the young Jedi admired Revan, including Malak. When Revan set off to challenge the Mandalorians, Malak was the first to join the cause. And when Revan fell to the dark side, it was inevitable Malak would fall as well. Okay, so, once again, Malik just seems like a bit of a lackey, just doing whatever Revan said. And on top of that, still no answer as to why Revan fell. What happened in the Mandalorian War that was so bad it caused all of this? I mean, okay, war is hell and the Jedi were ineffective, but that doesn't seem like, you know, it's enough. And yes, indeed, let's dive a bit more into the relationship between Revan and Malik. Are you saying that Malik was just, yeah, a follower? Like, by himself, he'd never have done this, because the dream I had indicated that might be the case. Revan was always the more powerful of the pair. When Revan fell, we had hoped the Sith threat was ended. But Malak quickly assumed Revan's role, and embraced the dark side as fully as his master ever had. Now, Malak leads the Sith Armada against the Republic. Hate and vengeance drawing him ever further down the dark path fueling his powers until they have surpassed those of his old master. Only you and Bastila together can stop Malik now. The way ahead will be difficult for young Bastila, and for you. But you must draw strength from each other. May the Force be with you. All right, so Bastila is now back, meaning, yes, we're taking her, we're taking the Wookiee. Two frontliners and me sneaking around the back. I demand justice! The Central Family is a blight upon Dantooine. They must be punished. The Council will look into this matter, Mr. Matale. You must be patient. Your accusations have no proof. And we do not want you stirring up trouble with the Sandrals, if there is some mistake. Mistake? My son Shen is missing. How can there be any doubt the Sandrals are to blame? There are other possible explanations for your son's disappearance. Ah, you... Jedi are good for nothing but talk. I shall only wait so long before I take action on my own. As dangerous as the threat from Darth Malak and the Sith may be, we Jedi cannot simply abandon our other responsibilities. The Council has promised, Alan Matali, we will look into his son's disappearance. Should you have time, Padawan, you may want to investigate this matter. Oh, I like that. Not only is the Padawan who's only just made it from Apprentice been asked to, you know, do the most important task in the galaxy. While you're doing it, would you mind, like, you know, sorting out this small local issue of no significance whatsoever? I mean, we would, but we're too busy standing around in a semicircle all day, every day, doing nothing. Yeah, I'm just gonna challenge him. I have more important things to do, like, you know, track it down bloody Revan and Malik and whatever, like you just told me to do. Your study and training are important, of course. But the Jedi are not a cloistered order. Our influence and teachings must spread beyond the walls of our academies. It is in our real world that we truly prove ourselves worthy of the title Jedi. You would do well to remember this young Padawan. The task has its own importance. It may also serve to divert our minds for a short time. 
something which carries its own rewards. Okay, hold up here, hold up. You guys all literally stand here all day, every day, inside the walls behind a locked gate. And I think Nemo outside was saying, like, you know, he's not really welcome inside anymore for some reason. He was a bit vague on the details, but I swear he said something of that nature. You never get out there. You just stand around in here. You can't flipping lecture me on the fact you need to get out and engage with that old oh, bloody hell. Okay, so the council's cocky useless. Got it. Right, Bastila, get over here. We've got to make some improvements to your weapon. Number one, we're going to be making it red, obviously. And number two, yes, more attack, more damage, and most importantly, on hit, stun, 25% chance. Though there is presumably a way for that to be blocked uh, as well. But still, that is, uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good uh, right there. Everybody weapons out. Oh, now that's more badass, yes. Also, would you like these Jedi robes? Because, like, for some reason you don't seem to, like, own your own. Which is a bit weird, but, um, okay, now you can have some Jedi robes, lovely. And honestly, you may as well have the, um, the strength gauntlets too, because nobody else actually needs them for anything. And other than that, what does that actually do to, uh, to you? That is strength of 13. Okay, that doesn't help you. But, like, one more strength, we will be able to slightly, slightly boost the amount of damage you can do per hit. Your dexterity is determining how well you're hitting, but the strength still affects, like, how much damage you do, I think. Oh, and speak of the devil, we can actually do that right now. So, uh, I could make her just a little bit stronger. But then again, she's not going to be wearing that armband forever. Probably best instead, wisdom goes up to 14. Because then that's a bonus to her force powers and whatever. So, uh, that's going to be useful. Skills, oh yeah, you're completely bloody useless, aren't you? Yes, 100% useless. Okay, just... Then again, she doesn't need to treat injury. That's the one thing she doesn't need to do. Because, like, she can just, you know, use her force abilities to heal. I like using her more for, like, you know, healing, support, etc. So, uh, I mean, I could also use her for awareness. I guess she can have some awareness and her powers. Uh, I want, hang on, Force Valor to go up to... Uh, no, she's not quite ready for Night Valor yet. Which is... Uh, yeah, all stats go up by three rather than two. Because I kind of like that Valor. Valor seems to be a really good ability. Now, she could level up Force Shield, but to be honest, I'm not so keen on that one. Because that just affects her, and plus four to defense is uh, hardly spectacular. Then again, it's all her saving throws as well, which is... Uh, that's not so bad. Okay, what's, what's the best option here? To be honest, you really can't actually level up much right now, so... Okay, I'll give Force Shield another go... It will be useful in the event she needs to, like, you know, keep herself sustained in combat for a while. And she's got another level up, so, okay, keep on keeping on here. Just get her awareness, you know, ticking up. That's nice. Then she's got, oh, then she's got a feat. Yes, max out her two-handed fighting. She's good with the uh, two-bladed lightsaber thingy. Very, very nice indeed. That's an absolute, yeah, definite. And now she has got the Night Valor. That's what I wanted to see, though she could also have... No, she can't have the upgraded uh, heal just yet. But Night Valor, 100%. I think that's actually pretty darn good. Okay, so now she's up to uh, Vitality 81 at Force of 90 versus my... Oh, I'm looking really red and evil right now. This is great. My Vitality is pretty low. Uh, my Force is not as good either, which is... Uh, a bit embarrassing, as I'm supposed to be the one who's good at the Force, but whatever. You know, I'm the Consular, she's just a Sentinel, which strikes me as, you know, sucking a lot, next to a Consular, the vastly superior class. Oh, and, uh, Jahani's right here. Right, hello, I've redeemed you. I didn't really mean to, I was just trying to, like, flirt with you. But apparently I've also, like, redeemed you. So, do you want to be part of my awesome team? Because, to be honest, I'd rather have you than Bastler anyway, really. I must give you my thanks. Because of you... I am once again welcome within the Jedi Order. And yes indeed. How's that? Oh, bloody hell. I think I think one of the Jedi's... Oh no, she's got stuck. We've definitely got a Jedi who's got stuck in her pathfinding over there. So, yes. Like, the Council was implying Quattro might not be dead, just wounded. Quattro's injuries were not so severe as I first believed. I was foolish to believe I could harm a master such as she with my, my clumsy efforts. The fierce confrontation between us was nothing more than part of my training. What 
Mithra wanted me to understand the threat of the dark side. To see how easy it was to fall from the path of light. And yes indeed, where's she? Because I haven't seen her around here at all. After our last battle, Quatra had nothing left to teach me. I needed time alone to explore the turmoil of my own spirit. Only then was I ready to follow a guide. You, back to the light. When I left, Quatra knew her work with me was done. There are other disciples who need training throughout the galaxy. And she could not stay to see if I passed this most difficult trial. With your help, I have passed this difficult trial. The Council now feels I am ready to continue with my training. Though they have asked me to wait here for the time being. And the Wookiee wants to get involved too. I hope you use it well. I really hope she speaks Wookiee by the way. This has been a painful lesson, Johanny. But it seems you have learned it well. I am certain you will be a credit to the Order. I do not know what the Council has in store for me. But I will trust in the Force and the way of the Jedi to help me through whatever is to come. Also, important question. Have we killed enough Mandalorians that John's happy at this point? Have you found the Mandalorian raiders yet? I mean, I've killed some of them, yes. Good. Good. Put them down like the animals they are. But now that you've killed some of them, they won't stop until you've defeated their leader. You must find him and kill him too. Okay, um, do you know where he is? Because I'm pretty sure I've been, like, everywhere on the planet and I haven't seen him. Thank you, young Jedi. Okay, I'll be back for you later. Oh, yes, hang on, there's also... Yes, Elise, we need to have a chat to you. So, uh, if we can be a dick to her, we should do that. My droid is still missing. I can feel him like a hole in my aching heart. You were having sex with your droid, weren't you? So, uh... Your droid escaped, and uh, don't worry, I'll find him. Okay, he's still out there somewhere. I mean, that's an evil thing to say. But, like... No. I'm going to give her the harsh truth, which is... Uh, it's weird that, like, you know, you were getting so attached to that droid. So, uh, yeah, I just destroyed him. And possibly you're going to be angry about that. My droid? Destroyed? No. No, this cannot be happening. I can't bear to live without him. And she's... Uh-oh. She's, she's wandering off. Should we... Okay, she just said I can't bear to live and now she's wandering towards the river. Should we... I think we should be doing something. Is... Is she okay? Um... I'm a little concerned about this. She ran off towards the Jedi. Okay, um, I think we might want to be just, um, following to see what happens next. Because I'm a little bit concerned about her, actually. Oh, hang on. She's not up here in the bedrooms, but, like, you two weren't here a minute ago. Right, hang on. Who are you two? What do you want? Now, Samt, don't be so rude. If it wasn't for this young Jedi, we wouldn't have met. Oh, I... okay. I took the loss of my droid much too hard. I feel I must apologize. Okay, sorry, that was her. But like, um, are you now just having sex with this Jedi Padawan or something? Because I'm pretty sure they're not supposed to... You know what? It's fine. Though, can I have like, you know, some money or something? Unfortunately, I have none to give. Otherwise, I would. But I still feel I must explain myself. I suppose I came across a little odd. I was much too attached to my droid. It was all that was left of my husband, you see. Maybe I thought that through the droid, my husband could live again, be with me still. But I went too far. I could not see what was missing in living a normal life. Fortunately, in my grief, I returned here and ran into Samt. An absolutely fascinating man. Okay, I think this woman might just be really, really thirsty. Okay, so when her husband died, she didn't really have much in the way of company, so she turned that robot into a bit of a thirst bot, and now he's been destroyed, she's run straight here, she's run into another willing partner. Okay, that's fine. You have a nice life, this is, this is fine, and, uh, oh, I can just, you know, slag him off. No, I'm just gonna say he seems nice, I'm gonna be nice about this. Sam and I got to talking, and, well, we have a lot in common. I think we'll be seeing more of each other. It's funny how things work out in the end. Maybe there is such a thing as fate, after all. But I think we should be going now. We have so much more to talk about. 
I just wanted to thank you for what you've done for me and what you tried to do. Goodbye and thank you. That better not be okay. Good, there were some dark side points there because I was a dick at the same time. So, okay, I kind of feel bad for the um the robot at this point because he basically committed suicide because you know he wanted her to move on. And it turns on she could move on really, really easily. She just basically started shacking up with the first guy she ran into, like, literally 30 seconds after she learned the robot had been destroyed. So, actually, like, I feel like the robot didn't need to die. Okay, we solved a fair few local problems. We've got Basler back. She's now got a red double-ended lightsaber and a proper Jedi robe, which is lovely. And she's going to be very good at, yeah, stunning people. She can stun people. I can stun people. She can buff me. The Wookiee's just an unstoppable murder machine. And uh, having solved one mystery, apparently we're now going straight on to the next. Because uh, somebody's son is missing. So uh, we need to resolve that. Potentially in a way that leads to Alan being dead. Because he was a dick to me. So screw that guy. So uh, next time, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to try and figure out what happened to his son. I think Shen was the name. I'm sure somebody said uh, Shen. And then, depending on how long that takes, we might just go and, you know, do the thing that might help save the entire galaxy. Go into those ruins, uh, figure out what uh, Revan and Malik were after, see what's going to be happening straight after that. So hopefully you join me for that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Knights of the Old Republic. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, wait, and flamethrower! 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 Okay, so this is... This is definitely morally questionable. The point where you start singing the flamethrower song, potentially, you've gone over the line.